Welcome back to our discussions on financial, financial statements and financing decision. In the last session, we saw and understood that there is an importance of debt equity ratio. As we discussed and saw that debt equity ratio is reflects the financial structure or the capital structure of a company. The capital structure which consists of the debt and equity, or in other words, the debt equity ratio which shows the capital structure is very important because the debt equity ratio affects the profitability, affects the interest payable capability and also affects the cost of capital. So today we are going to understand how debt equity ratio affects the VAC weighted average cost of capital, how it affects the earning per share and how it affects interest coverage ratio. Let me start with debt equity ratio and earning per share. That means the profitability of a company which is reflected by earning per share is a function of the debt equity ratio. When I say profitability through EPS, my focus is on profit distributing ability of a company. The profit distributing ability of a company to a large extent depends on the capital structure of a company. So, the debt equity ratio has an impact on the earning per share of a company. The earning per share is calculated by dis dividing the profit after tax with by the number of shares. And the profit after tax of a company depends on the profit before tax, before interest as well as also the interest and the tax that you are going to pay. And interest depends on the debt equity ratio. So there is a possibility that with a high debt equity ratio you can increase the earning per share. Because high debt equity ratio means high debt and high debt means high interest. But a question should come to your mind will always high debt equity ratio lead to high EPS? To answer that question, we have to pick up two numbers. The debt equity ratio may lead to higher debt equity ratio, may lead to high EPS. Sometime high debt equity ratio may also lead to lower EPS. That, as I mentioned, that depends on the rate of return or rate of return on capital employed and the rate of interest. If the rate of return on capital employed is greater than the rate of interest, then higher debt equity ratio will lead to higher EPS. But if the rate of return on capital employed is less than the rate of interest, then there is the EPS will be inversely related to the debt equity ratio. So therefore, the, the, the management has to be clear that if they want to increase earning per share solely by high debt equity ratio, there is a possibility after some time the business may be exposed to higher risk. There are cases after cases where we have seen that high debt equity ratio means high leverage will lead to the high EPS but the company is exposed to higher risk and may become bankrupt in the near future. So therefore, you have to see another number. So high debt equity ratio and interest coverage ratio. Interest coverage ratio shows the number of times the profit before interest and tax divided by the PBIT. In other words, how many times the interest is being covered by the profit before interest and tax. It is simple to understand that if the high debt equity ratio is there, if the PBIT remains constant, the high debt equity ratio will lead to the lower and lower ICR. So it is very important for us to remember that if a high debt equity ratio is happening but no PBIT is changing, then in that case high debt equity ratio will lead to lower and lower ICR. So there is a possibility that the company will go bankrupt because of huge leverage or huge debt burden. So the other issue here is a debt equity ratio's impact on VAC, which is a weighted average cost of capital. So the finance says 
that the weighted average cost of capital depends on the cost of debt and the cost of equity. We know that the cost of equity represented by KE is greater than KD and therefore it is possible that a company which is financing its business with high equity, the cost of capital will be much greater than the cost of debt. So as a result, the weighted average cost of capital will be higher. That means in order to understand the financing decision of a company, it is necessary to see the impact of the financing decision on the earning per share that is a profitability impact of financing decision on interest coverage ratio that is on the solvency and impact of the financing decision on the weighted average cost of capital that is the cost of capital. Unless we understand the effect of the debt equity ratio on all these three, it is not possible to comment on the debt equity ratio. However, it is important to say or it is sufficient to say that debt equity ratio has a huge implication on the profit distributing ability, on the cost of capital and on the solvency position. And in, in the next discussions, we will try to concentrate on the profitability and see the impact of profitability on the capital structure or on the debt equity ratio. Thank you very much.